And joining me now to go over the details of this bill is one of its sponsors, Senator Kemp Hannon, chairs the Senate Health Committee. He's joining us tonight from Hofstra University on Long Island. Senator, thank you very much for your time. Nice to be with you, Liz. So, um, okay, there, this bill, it's very complicated. You and I have talked about this whole situation of health care exchanges before. It is mandated that the state set it up by, uh, for the Health Care Reform Act, obviously. You've chosen to go with an authority and not a nonprofit structure. Why is that? Um, there, after the roundtable that the Senator Seward and myself, Senator Seward's the head of the Insurance uh, Committee for the Senate, uh, it, there was a consensus uh, from the business community, from the not-for-profit community, from uh, the producers, uh, from the, the think tanks that uh, a, a public authority would be the best structure. It was simple, um, especially as we have chosen to do. We made it subject to the Public Authority Reform Act mm. for disclosure, conflict of interest, and it, it gives a certain accountability. Uh, it does not and best of all, from the way we have structured our public authority, uh, we leave the decision making in regard to regulations and rates uh, by insurance companies with either uh, the D Department of Health or the Department of Insurance, which they have now. And therefore, there is no dual uh, uh, roles. Uh, if you had it in either of those two agencies, they'd be both um, uh, insurance exchange and regulator at the same time. So the, when you bring up the issue of conflict of interest, that's actually a, a, an interesting point because Citizen Action has put out, and this is, look, this is a, a liberal entity, so I'm not surprised that they're not pleased with, with your bill, but they are concerned about the lack of strong conflict of interest rules regarding who can be appointed to the governing board of the exchange. I mean, how are you going to make well, sure? Well, actually, 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 they're mistaken. Um, ah, good. I, 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 I didn't know uh, who they were, so I clicked on their website and I saw they had uh, promoting the Democratic candidate for Congressional New York 26. But uh, that being aside, no, well, they do uh, make they yes, wrong. they endorse. Sure, they are an in, they are a political yeah. entity. So they're not a think tank. And, no. Um, when, but if you look at, and, and they were commenting on some uh, imagined version of our bill. Our bill went in on Wednesday night um, because we thought people talking about this ought to know what we really stand for. Mm -hmm. And by having a public authority subject to the Public Authority Reform Act, we have strong conflict of interest provisions built into it, and uh, we don't have to worry about uh, any uh, a anyone commenting on it. The second part of it is there's besides the conflict of interest where we're talking about ethics, there's also conflict of roles and that's what we want to avoid. We want to leave the regulation of rates with the Department of Insurance or the Department of Health so we don't have dual roles uh, in one individual. So the governor actually I understand also has been circulating some bill language although we haven't seen a, a program bill from the governor yet. There's also this question about whether the entity that runs the exchange and remember people should remember that the health care reform law requires everybody to get insurance so this is a way to facilitate that. Am I correct in that? Well it requires about 90 percent of the people in America to have insurance right. but uh, uh, the other part of it is it re does require states to either have their own exchange or to let the federal government have its exchange. And a right. couple of states up to now have passed in this, Alaska and Florida. So if we wanted to be in that group, we could, we could pass on having an exchange. So, but of course, here, here's the thing. If you pass on having the exchange, you leave everything up to the federal government and, and you, it could be looked at as a state's rights issue. Um, what about the, uh, the idea of having this entity, this, this authority, be able to advocate on behalf of consumers actively and try and drive down the cost of insurance. Is that not something you support? I always support driving down the cost of insurance. However, the structure that the federal okay. government has left to us says that we are trying to give insurance coverage to people who do not have it, maybe 1 to 1.2 million New Yorkers. And in order to do that, you're going to have to have a successful insurance set of products. Now, it's, it's a different uh, aspect than Medicaid, which is given an entitlement coverage. That's not insurance. Right. And so the exchange is being asked to coordinate both entitlement and insurance product. 
So while in terms of anybody who says this is to advocate for driving down the price, I think is mistaken. And if we do that, we're going to find out that people will not enter the exchange, will not participate this way, and it will not be, it will not be a success. You really have to have, say, what is the, the, the mission that's been handed to us by the federal government? And by the way, the federal government has made this so complex <laughs> and has failed to fill in many of the blanks that are needed to be filled in to, to uh, successfully implement this. But, you know, it, there are well, people Well, wait, if that's the that, case, Senator, then how, how is it that the bill could be successful? Well, what we're doing is this. We're giving a basic governance structure. We're given a basic outline, and as many of the other states are doing uh, who have implemented this, and then we're setting down a series of studies so that decision points can be examined. We can know whether or not certain decisions can be implemented or not, right. whether they will have downsides. Uh, remember, that just the other day, McKinsey, uh, one of the national think tanks, came out with a survey of corporations and found out that f up to one-third of small businesses may forego their current insurance coverage because of exchanges. I mean, if that takes place in New York, we failed. In other words, we'll decrease the people with coverage, not increase. Yeah. What about the idea of a recurring funding stream to keep this thing going? How is it going to get funded? Theoretically, it's going to be funded by making a profit off of the products itself. But not in the, the, for, not in the first few months, obviously. I mean, it, it, initially no. it's got to get going, right? So how much is it going to cost? And that's, and that's why, that's why that the federal government has given innovator grants, it's given startup grants, and it's promised some other grants uh, in addition. Yeah, but if, if in fact the state doesn't manage to pass legislation in time to get this up and running by, is it January 1st, 2013? Well, actually, uh, you have to have something viable by, uh, it's, it has to be selling insurance products and going by January 1, 2014. 14. It has to be viable by two, uh, July 2013, and you really have to get something implemented during the course of early 2014, which is why getting it done now is something I think ought to be done which is why Senator Seward and myself introduced this legislation last night. We only have about eight days left on the calendar for the legislative session. And frankly, you need to get this out. People need to take a look at it. People need to evaluate it. They ought to be doing it on an objective standard. And, and, and we need to get, I think it should be done this year with the basic structure there the, and and then from there we can start to add different elements if needed well yeah because what i was going to say is if you don't have this passing during this session will then there be enough time for new york actually to set something up and then subsequently qualify for the money that it needs to get it off the ground well that's it is i think i think there would be but it would not be as uh, easy. It would not be as logical as it would be to pass a, a public authority now. It's a statutory entity. Uh, we're not going to let it tax. We're not going to let it bond. Uh, we're, it's going to be controlled. And we will specifically allocate decision making on policy to the legislature and the governor yeah, as it exists now. That's interesting. That sounds a little cumbersome. So every time that this entity wants to make a decision in turn that that input that um that impacts how it runs, it has to go back to the legislature and get permission? Not how it impacts as it runs, but how, what it implements. Currently, for instance, the basic health benefit, which is still to be determined by the federal government, uh, has not been determined, and then the state has to make a decision as to what it wants to add or not add to the basic health benefit. Right, I see. New York, New York has 57 mandates to health. Each one of those had a constituency and had a good purpose. But the question will be if those, any of those 57 don't make it into the federally mandated basic health benefit, what's going to be added? Should we leave it to some nameless bureaucrats or should we go, go to the people who are accountable, whether it's statewide in terms of the governor or district by district in terms of the assembly or senate? Where are you right now with the, with the assembly on this bill? I mean, this is right now a one-house bill, correct? It is a one-house bill. We're the first ones to take the stand, to lay it out there. Um, they're taking a hard look at this, and I'm sure they're gonna, they'll have their own thoughts. Well, and just uh, before we run out of time, I mean, you mentioned that this, you want to see this done, and there are only eight days remaining in the session, less actually remaining in the session. All of next week you'll be in, and then one day is scheduled, although it's possible you'll run over a little bit. What, what's the likelihood of the governor's agenda passing and then subsequently getting to things like this? 
I think I think it's I think that first of all I think the governor's agenda is something he really wants. So I think those will be addressed at least if the bills can pass. And uh, this there's a lot of time to do this. Okay, but the governor's agenda includes, I know the tax cap is something that the Senate Republicans at, at already passed his old bill, his old program bill. Now this deal, we haven't seen it yet. Might you be taking it up next week? I absolutely think so. This is like the finals of the NBA. You I know, the last 30 <laughs> seconds. The last 30 <laughs> seconds are all important. And what about gay marriage then, if that's the case? Will it make it to the floor in your house? I had expected that to come to the floor. Um, uh, there's been other people who are powerful advocates for gay marriage who said if they don't have the votes, they don't want it to come out. Well, the governor says that he doesn't want, to want it to come out, so might there be the votes in your conference? I know that you are now clear that you're going to be voting no, correct? Correct. And I don't, I, I don't know. I haven't had the discussion with anybody, and there hasn't been a conference on it. Hmm. Well, there's not that much more time to conference that bill, so when do you think that might happen? I don't know. You'd have to ask. One of the things that's the beauty of not being leader is I can leave that to Dean Skellos. <laughs> well, you might see him before I do since you're down on Long Island, Senator, so maybe I'll check in with you before the week is out. I want to thank you very That'd much for, jo for joining us tonight because the health exchange situation is sort of percolating along under the radar, and it is a pretty important issue. So I want to thank you very much for being here with us. Thanks. Thanks for having me.